Hey guys, it's Two Chubby Sisters. All right, for today's video, it was initially going to be Food and Spirits Episode 2, uh, but instead it's going to be a true crime story for you guys. Uh, when we were investigating for, like, well, researching for our first video, which was Food and Spirits Episode 1, for the Hotel Blackhawk, we came across um, a series of books called Gruesome Quad Cities. Um, this is book six in a gruesome series by an author named Nick Valich. Uh, we, in the synopsis for the book, it's there was a thing called Milan Murder Farm. Well, we're from Milan, mm -hmm. and so that caught our attention. Um, and it's Milan, yes, not Milan, Milan. like Italy. <laughs> it's not like Italy, it's Milan, <laughs> but it's spelled the same. Uh, and there was a guy named Henry Bastian. And so, yeah, Henry Bastian um, was a well-known person mm -hmm. in his community here in Milan. Um, this all took place in 1896, or in the late 1800s, I should say. Um, so I actually started researching it more, and I found some articles online about him. Um, and he owned a farm. It, we'll, we'll show later. There's actually a picture, and it, from what we can understand, if you guys are from this area, you, it looks like it's on the right, about right by Camden Park, if you guys know where that is. Um, so Henry Bastian, at the time in 1896, was 26 years old. He was married to an Eva Bastian, his wife, and he lived with um, his wife and his sister Carrie. He, they had a, a child. It doesn't really specify boy or girl. Yeah. But um, they said that she, and she was pregnant due very soon at that time. So this all happened on February 29th, um, where this story actually all kind of, blew up and opened up and what we're getting into. So Henry was known to hire people on contract um, to help out on his farm. So what he would do, he would like, I'll, you work for me for a year, I'll pay you this lump sum of money at the end of the year. And that's what the, they would do. And they would like provide him with, I think, room and board and food and stuff like that. So um, on February 29th, it was reported that um, a Fred Cushman, who had been hired, 21-year-old from Rock Island, had been hired by Henry, and that was like his last day of work, and he was supposed to be paid that day. And they said he was leaving to go to um, a dance or something. I think it was like in Black Hawk Township, which yeah. if you guys are from here, Black Hawk Township is basically, it's my land. It's my, yeah. yeah. So, um, so he was supposed to be leaving. Well, they found him um, outside of the Bastion Farm gate. And they said that he, um, I think what they said his coat or something was off or something but they found him with one of his uh feet still in the like the stirrup of the strap of the horse and the saddle saddle and um of course you know it's february so it's freezing outside it's you guys, below you know, zero most likely and um they said he was on the ice and he had a one like basically a severe blow, blow to, the to the head, head. And, um, but they didn't find anything else on him. He had no money on him. He had nothing else on him. They said they found, like, a couple silver coins a few, like, miles away from him, but it wasn't, like, on him. Um, so this is what kind of, like, started it all. And the coroner, after examining it, and they just basically ruled it out as an accident, saying he was thrown from the horse, and that's what happened. But that's when the family was like, mm, this doesn't seem right. It's a little suspicious. Yeah, so... Um, so then when the family, family started questioning, they're like, no, this doesn't seem right. Like he has no, he was just paid by Henry, supposedly just paid by Henry. Um, there's nothing else on his body. Like if you're thrown from a horse in the middle of winter on ice, you're going to be bruised. You're going to be, yeah. yeah, there's not going to be just one contusion to the head. Yeah. Um, and he had nothing on there. Like something's not right. So that's when, um, so I think it was like beginning of March. Investigators started to change. They had um, some other doctors come in and investigate. Doctors Barth and Hollowbush. They said that the wounds causing death could not have been inflicted by any way other than vicious blow. So, you know, it wasn't yeah. just he got thrown from a horse. So this is when things kind of started turning. They maybe thought it was a robbery. Um, and the reason why they said it could actually be a good way for someone to rob someone is because when you left the Cushman farm, you had to literally get off the horse, open the gate... And then to get back up on your horse when you were out. So, like, if he were to be doing that, someone could easily come up and attack him while he was and everything like that. It basically made it look like he got one foot in the... Stirrup and was attacked and... Yeah. Yeah. Well, it still seemed a little suspicious. And, um, of course, you know, small town. We all know my Gossip line. mills start running. Um, they started like, okay. The family asked the, the investigation to basically be reinvented opened in the corner, you know, to keep, look at it again. Um, 
this is when rumors started running wild and they started to notice that um, several other people that had worked on that farm, similar cases. Yeah. Like they would just all disappear. Of a sudden appear. Never to be heard from again. Um, so. But uh, he always had a story for. For whatever reason why they weren't there or why they left without going to where they actually said they were going. Um, the rumors started wrapping in so, like, so wild that it made it all the way to Chicago. Which, if you guys don't know this area, Chicago's we're like three hours from Chicago yeah, by the, car. Yeah, so um, a lot of because we're right on the Iowa border, like so Iowa was like hearing about it and everything like that. Um, so police started questioning it. They're like, okay. So at this point, I think they started basically thinking that maybe he was robbed and killed that way. Um, that it wasn't just an accident. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when. Um, so when they started, they started investigating it a little bit more. And so, um, on, I think it's okay, Chris, this is like a few days into March then. So then, um, the more the in police investigated, they started to kind of find out that Henry Bastion was actually in a lot of financial trouble. Like, to the point where he couldn't even afford groceries for yeah. his household. Like, it was bad. Um, they said a few days before that he'd actually sold a horse for like 25 bucks. Um, which... <laughs> When you read hundred years ago, twenty five bucks, bucks was a lot, lot of money. money. Um, his dad had actually passed away the year before, and he's actually they said he'd been running the farm about eight years, I think. So his dad or his mother had then moved to Geneseo, which is not far from here, about forty five minutes. minutes. Yeah, it's another couple towns over. Um, they uh, so his mom was living more like that, and his, he was running the farm for about eight years from his dad, and his dad had passed away the year before, and everything, and obviously things weren't going well. Um, so he sent money to his parents, and so he still really didn't have much money. And he had a kid, like, literally due. Yeah. He already had one. He had one kid here and another one was on the due, way. And... like, soon. So on March, I think it was 15th? No, 13th. March 13th. March 13th. The morning of March 13th, um, at, because obviously investigations were starting to not go in Henry's way, um, when they found out his financial trouble and things were not looking, they were looking a little suspicious. It's a little sus. Um... They found Henry's body in their grain farm. Grain or silo. Or sorry. And Henry had committed suicide. He took his own life. Um, which is really sad for the fact that, you know, I regret it. But, like, you have a kid in the way. You have a family. Like, you know. Um, we're thinking that they he figured out that they were closing, closing in on him. him and, and stuff like that. So this is when um, these, obviously, rumors started going. So then other people that had been known to work for him their family and friends started coming forward and be like, you know what? We have not heard from such and such since they started working for him. Yeah, we knew he was working on your farm, and then all of a sudden we never heard from, from him again. again. And um, they actually, um, this one particular guy, he um, came forward and was like, you know, my friend was working there, and he was supposed to come and live with me after he was done. And we wrote continuously, and then he never showed up. So when they actually initially... But actually, originally, I asked Henry about it. He's like, "Oh yeah, I just talked to him about the train station. He said he was going out west." And these were always the stories that he would give to people as this was happening. So as um, time, like obviously, you know, the only rumors started, like I said, going up all the way up to Chicago. Well, they end up finding um, a guy in Chicago. They came forward. Sorry, I have my notes. <laughs> um, I can't remember what his name was. Let's see, Charles Rayer. So they end up finding kind of this guy named Charles Rayer. He was up in Chicago, and they started. They're like, "You worked for him, you know." Like one of the one of the ones that made it out. Yeah, one of the ones that actually made it out. So, um, and they started to question him, and he or he came forward, and he was like, "Look, I actually saw him burying a body by this tree on the farm. I didn't say anything because." I had previously been in it was, at that time they called a sane asylum. Now we would call it like a mental health place, um, mental health facility. facility. Um, he goes, I didn't think anyone would believe me. They thought I was just going crazy because I had previous mental health issues. But I did see him bury the body, which led into other. So they they're like, okay, something's suspicious. So then something. they started really looking into it, and they started. Um, going into the farm. Well, at this time, um, his wife and kids left the farm. She, like, after he had committed suicide, and they buried, actually buried him at Chippeonic Cemetery. Which is in Rock Island, Illinois. Illinois. Um, so he's buried there. And um, I also know that, I guess they said one of his other victims is actually buried in the same cemetery, which is kind of messed up. But um, So his family completely left the farm. 
Um, they then put the farm up for, uh, well, the rent, because they can't sell it, because now there's it's part of an active investigation. investigation. Um, because they're like all these people missing, you know, and they found for Fred Cushman. So um, now that they're actively investigating, this guy actually rented the farm for at the time for four months, which I actually think he ended up renting it from longer after that. But he initially. started initially, but because you know, small town, everyone's curious what's going on. He started char charging people ten cents <laughs> to come and walk the lane. You could explore, or, look around, uh, see if you could find any, you know, clues. clues, and maybe you could help with this investigation because you know everyone becomes an investigator at this point. So they end up starting looking, and police actually went and looked where they, um, the guy from Chicago, Charles, said, and they actually dug up and they actually started finding finding more roommates and um, about like the people's stuff. They burned it. He yeah, burned he, it. they just found remnants of burned luggage, burned clothes. Um, that was, like, buried amongst... And how many bodies did they end up finding? So they ended end up actually connecting Henry Bastion to nine people's murders. Um, they, I think there was, like, six or seven others that they think might have been killed by Henry, but they actually can't connect it, or they never actually con fully connected it. Which some of them um, were immigrants. Yeah. That yeah, the, he they said he hired immigrants a lot because obviously that would be harder to trace. Um, um, so after they you know obviously they investigated and they found that these murders were taking place and everything like that. Um, they actually called his wife and sister back in to start questioning him. His wife actually started to put the pieces together and was like, okay, I think this actually happened because. Um, every time that one of these workers was their last day and they was supposed to be the day that he paid them, he would send her off to her family. Like, why don't you go visit your parents today? And so her and her child were not gonna, there. They So when he went to kill him, there's no one there to see that he actually did it. No one there to see that he actually get rid of any evidence because she was off visiting her parents. Yeah, and then his sister, it was always happened to be on her. So, like, I, I'm guessing because it was back in the late 1800s, people didn't bathe, like, regularly. Um, so they said that, oh, it was today, is the day that her, she, um, It's her bathing day. day. So you're not allowed in the house. So no, you know, and stuff like that. So she wouldn't see her brother for however long. Well, yeah. And they were assuming that's when he would dispose, dispose of, of and everything doing. like that. So, um, yeah. So this is kind of a messed up story. Um, at the very end, you know, I feel bad the most for, um, his wife because, here she was married to a man who she had no idea what was going on. They had a kid. They had one on the way. And, you know, and she actually ended up going and changing her... Um, About a year after, after all this happened, she went and um, changed her last name back to her maiden name. And they, she got legally, her kid's name legally changed to that name as well. Just and, I just so it wouldn't follow them around for yeah, the rest of their lives. Um, and she actually remarried. So she, well, good for her because that's got to be hard to, like, move on from. Um... And, uh, on, I think by April of that year is when they kind of made the conclusion and that, um, this is what's creepy. You mean to tell us? Yeah, you can tell us, right? Like this. The, at the end of all of this, well, the sister kind of was flip-flopping her testimony or whatever you want to call it back and forth, but she always proclaimed that her brother was innocent. And then when they questioned her about her bathing day, you know, like, that you were, she goes, well, it was normal for that to happen. Like, her brother would go about his business, and she would have her day where she was bathing, because that's the way her father did it when he ran the farm. Which kind of sent shivers so up your spine can. and makes you think, oh, so, did was this just something that Henry did on his own, or did he learn this from his, his father? father? So, how many other remains, remains could possibly still be out there that yeah. maybe the father was doing this? It's killing, yeah. So, they too. think that the, his dad probably did the same thing, would hire people and kill them before he could pay them. Learn behavior. Yes. And so, yeah. So we're going to actually go and hopefully visit some of these places. And um, we're, we think we found his gravestone. So we're going to go visit that. And there'll be and later in this video. this is kind of an artist okay. rendition of, of Henry. what they think Henry looked like. Yes. I think there are, if you really look it up, there are um, actual yeah. pictures. Um, and so, so... And we're going to try to figure out the actual location, which we'll try to, we're going to add into this video of where um, the, it actually is. Um, so I, here, I don't know if Holly, you're going to see this. Okay. So if anyone knows in Milan where Camden Park is, I'm going to 
don't know how well you can, can you really see it? Get up right a there. So the green part is actually uh, Camden Park, and the yellow part is actually where they're saying that the farm was. So if you guys live in that area, you're probably living on the murder farm. <laughs> <laughs> What's, you know, I mean, we used to have pig roasts and stuff. Yeah. Like our family had family Camden reunion Park. in this park. And so that's <laughs> how close we were to, to all this. this. And, and we've never, we did until we went to okay. investigate. And to for, give a little background, our family founded this town. So we've been here forever and we had never heard about this. Right. And actually we meant when we, we actually, were here before it was called Milan. Yeah. Um, our family was not. Well, not y'all. <laughs> but, um, and are we actually, when we mentioned this to her, I'm like, Mom, have you ever heard of my murder farm? My mom's literally, it's her family. Like, it's been here forever. And she's like, what? The, not the not the Milan murder farm. It's her family. No, <laughs> no. Nah, yeah. Um, so we're like, Mom, have you ever heard about the Milan murder farm? And she was kind of like, no, what? And then we started telling her, and she just, and now she's been investigating because she's like, what? what she's is, like, yeah, did you know he's buried in Chippeonic Cemetery? Yeah. We're like, Oh, yeah, we kind of came across that. that. She's like, do you know we have at least a dozen family members mm -hmm. in that cemetery? <laughs> We're like, oh. <laughs> so it makes you kind of think, you know, and this is obviously a small town, and all these kind of things always, I feel like every town has their little bad history or, like, their little true crimes. I don't think there's true crimes any, and any town in the world that doesn't have... Some type of true crime in there. Like, some type of horrible thing that's happened into it. But yeah. But. So if you find this interesting, um, if you're from this area and you didn't know, um, if there's anything that we maybe we left, I know there's a lot more. Um, I actually a lot more information that because um, she just kind of skimmed a lot of it. Yeah, because this seems like video could be really long if I actually went through all of it, like all his victims and everything like that. Um, if if you see this video and you're from this area and you want to add anything to it, just write it in the comments and let us know if there maybe or if we didn't get something right. Um, let us know too, uh, and everything. Like Sorry that. if we mispronounce things because yes, because some of the I'm horrible with names. Some of like, these are kind of <laughs> yeah, hard and to everything. Pronounce. Um, like we said, we're gonna add more to this video by we're gonna go try to visit these places. Um, I hope you guys found this interesting too. <laughs> hey guys, so we are at if you can pan around just a little bit. I don't want to get like there's graves. We're at Chippeonic Cemetery and we're kind of looking around, kind of visiting family. Um, Henry Bastion is buried here, but he's in an unmarked grave. Yeah, um, we're guessing so that people who were not happy with what he did didn't disturb his grave, you know, because the family would have had to clean that up, and it's not their fault that he did what they did or he did. But I mean, it was bad enough, you know, like he had, like you know, like we said before, he you know had already had a child and one that was like literally born, born days. late days after he took his life. Um, so you know they had to live with that legacy of what he did. Which is um, probably why they changed their name. They did, yeah, and why his grave is left unmarked. Um, we also know that in the same cemetery, one of I guess one of his other one of his victims is buried here too, which is kind of hard too. So, um, but it's Chippeonic Cemetery, which literally in Sauk, Native American language means "City of the Dead," which I mean, would is appropriate for, for a, a cemetery. cemetery name. But um, yeah, we thought we were going to be able to find it because we actually. Looked up online that it might be here, but then after we got here and we started researching it more, we kind of find out that it was unmarked. It's so, unmarked. So we'll so probably we'll never, you'll never find it, which is okay, because I can understand why they would do that. But, um, but there, and there are twenty five thousand graves in the cemetery, so yeah, you could look for days and probably not find. But it. we did get to visit some of our, because some of our family, like we said, yeah, we have are family buried here, um, so yeah, so that was kind it's of a beautiful cemetery. Yeah, it is. And be respectful in cemeteries, yeah, guys, please. Here, be respectful. Yes. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Hey, guys. So, as you guys just saw, we were at the cemetery, and um, we obviously couldn't find Henry Bastion's grave because it's an unmarked grave, and yeah. that cemetery is huge. Um, and that also, one of his victims is actually buried there. And the research that when we were looking up, to, that we found out that he had he was in an unmarked grave. We also found out that he was nicknamed the Mad Butcher of Milan. Um, so that was yeah, it's a little creepy. We also went up near Camden Park to look for exactly where the like it was located. Yeah. Um, from what we can see, if we got it right from the picture that we saw of the diagram of yeah. where it's it, part of it's developed into houses now. So some there's people, a it's just normal neighborhoods so and some of it looks like it's woods so yeah. but the, uh, some of those people may be living in some some haunted houses, houses. <laughs> um also another like little side a story with it um we actually found out that like one of his victims and many of you know probably the old Milan um train depot down here he's 
most recently was a coffee shop. Um, and they actually found a piece of luggage from one of the victims that was sitting there for three years. And I'm like, I, how does it go unnoticed notice for three years that this person was supposedly, like, I don't know, tiny town, you know, what's well, a tiny depot. Yeah. And, but this piece of luggage, I apparently sat there for three years and it was with luggage to one of his victims. Yeah. Um, but you have to give credit to Fred Cushman's family, who is what the case that blew this whole thing open. He's the one that they found in the, with one foot in the saddle yeah. right outside the gate of the Bastion um, farm. Because they didn't want to settle with the fact that they thought it was just an accident, like he was thrown off his horse, like, you know, as we stated previously when we were telling, um, they didn't want to just believe it. And they kept pushing for more investigation. And thankfully they did, because if they hadn't, who knows how long he would have continued to do this yep. or how many, you know, people, how many generations would have ended up being. Yeah. Um, so because of that, you know, so many people, I think, got a little bit of closure and got to find out what happened to some of the people that, you know, their families or friends that worked for him that just disappeared. Um, one of them, that story is that actually with the victims that was kind of sad. Um, and I'm glad that they found this out because hopefully the word got back to. I got some um, closure. Closure was one of the people that worked on his farm was a German immigrant who he was going to take the money that he earned working on the farm to bring his fiance over here from Germany and buy a house and they were going to start their life here. And um, obviously he never made it off the farm. He was one of the victims yeah. um, and everything like that. But at least she and anybody else who was looking for him got to find you know, They found out. They weren't just wondering for the rest of their lives what, what happened, happened to him. Because, I mean, it's one thing to search for someone in this country, but when you're coming from another country, there's probably not much documentation on you. So he kind of just... Which is why we're thinking is why he hired... A lot of these immigrants, immigrants cause just because it was easier to cover it up. So, but yeah, so, you know, it's, it, it's an interesting story. I hope, okay, and yeah, here. We want to give credit to this book because this is kind of the book that led us into this story and find out yeah, about it. Some Quad Cities, Cities by Nick Volish. Volish. Guys, I'm not um, sure. I'm, I know I probably just butchered yeah, that. You can, we bought <laughs> this on Amazon so you guys can get it there, or I think they. Something. If you're in the Quad City area, there's it's in different. I think like Walgreens or CVS or one of them has it. I think too. Um, but it's interesting when you're reading you you see true crime stories or you watch true crime stories or any kind of crime and you hear cities and you hear about it and you're like okay yeah, but when you start hearing it and it's the, literally the town you live in and all the names and the cities that are popping up in the story you're like oh my yeah. god this is literally our it's, backyard it, especially because <laughs> we're from a small town. So, it really kind of sends shivers down your spine. Well, I'm really this stuff. Here. <laughs> so, um, so that's it, guys. Um, I hope you found this interesting. We did as we did. Um, if any of it is wrong, or if you, you know, know more, more than we do, do I want to add to this. Leave it in the comments. Write down. Um, let us know. Um, and again, if you have any stories that you might think that you know something that happened in the area that we don't, yeah, maybe know, we'll do let us know, and we'll. Look it up. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll do another video on it and research it and investigate, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So, uh, hit that like button if you like this. Hit that subscribe, subscribe button, button and, and that little bell. So, so you know yeah. whenever we post. Yes. Um, and, and thanks for watching. Yes. And we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.